All right. It's March 21st and there's a balance patch. Note that this does not yet include the Phoenix release or the Varian rework or the Tracer nurse, but it does include a number of other things. It looks like Tyrus of Doom will get a respawn timer nerf of 30 seconds. They won't come as often. I think that's a fair change because the bottom bell tower control with repeated sapper camp spam is a really big part of the map right now, even though it's a fairly multi-dimensional map. They came quite often and I think that's okay. But I do wonder how it will change the map and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm curious to try it out. I, I, I think it's uh, probably a fair change. If it turns out that there's not enough to do on the map, then maybe they can revert it, but we'll see. These are the heroes that are going to be getting changes. I shan't be making a prediction presently because I've already briefly once over all the changes. So I would have a 100% accuracy prediction rate. Starting things off with Greyman. Razor Swipe is his area of effect repositioning talent in Worgen form. It's splash damage and it's movement. Greyman, of course, has been a top dog in the Nexus meta for a very long time now, even though he has no stuns, roots, and silences. He is a pure combination of brawn, mobility, and survivability, and that's it. So, uh, he is really good at PvP and PvE. Razor Swipe will nerf is... It's only one second, but that's, uh, that's a really big deal because it's a short cooldown. What this means is as follows. Less splash damage on wave clear, less splash damage on mercenary camp clear. It gives him less repositioning and juking ability in team fights and in skirmishes. Less chase potential. Uh, over a, a longer period of time, less escape potential over a longer period of time. Keep in mind before you could become Worgen, use Razor Swipe and Worgen Transformation. I believe it's five seconds and I'll just take a quick look at the exact duration of uh, switching. It is a five second cooldown. So you become Worgen, you can swipe three seconds in, you can swipe again. And then at five seconds you can become a human again for the, with the disengage. Now it's going to be zero seconds, you become Worgen, four seconds in, uh, you can do your second razor swipe and then you have one more second to become a uh, human. So it doesn't change the amount of razor swipes you do in a full speed double transition, but it does delay the first one and it does matter. And of course it matters in general juking and jiving in team fights. It, uh, and it just kind of deals with the biggest part of Greymane. Uh, without dealing with his damage or HP, it just gives him, uh, it, it nerfs him in, 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 I believe, the right area. Since uh, poor Jimmy Rayner, the martyr of the Nexus, of all the things that are untouched and innocent in this world, James Rayner suffers not the most in terms of damage Greetings, output, friend. but he suffers the most, thank you very much for the sub, in terms of anti-mobility. It's the mobility creep. Yeah, it's AoE damage uh, and uh, mobility that gets nerfed. And then this Visceral Attacks, that is the least popular level 13 talent, will now give you more CDR. So the thing is, it used to do one second on a three. So you had two second cooldown on Razor Swipe, but it was bad. Three was often enough. Now it brings you from four to two and a half. That might make the talent more attractive, but it's probably still worse than on the Prowl which is the mount speed during Inner Beast and the disengage Dark Flight uh, running wild talent. I don't think this will be picked or should be picked, but it does make sense that it gets a respective buff to bring Rage to Swipe closer to what it once could be. He does everything a little bit too well, so we curve it a bit. I think this is good reasoning and uh, so on. Maiev. When she came out, she had an invincibility jump on eight seconds. Now it's going to be 9. And then, I mean, it got nerfed to 9 after 3 days of being released to the Nexus. Now she's been out for almost a month or so, and it goes to 12. So I think that's fair. It's a 3 quarter second invincibility jump. Uh, you can't do it if you're silenced, rooted, or stunned, but you can block all those things with it if you cast it prematurely. And of course you remove uh, slows. So it is a very strong uh, trait and is now getting nerfed. I think that's fair. It is another consecutive nerf for Maiev, 
But let's not forget that Mayev currently in the HGC, the Heroes Global Championship, is first pick, first ban. In open division, she's first pick, first ban. And in ladder, she still gets universally feared as well. I don't think she's as good as Tracer presently, but she does. Uh, and, and I think actually, I didn't have her personally at tier S for ladder, uh, but she was still strong and... Um, you know, I think I think it's fair. Even if uh, even if you think her HP or damage is not good enough, which I think it is, it was pretty crazy to have invincibility jump on nine seconds. And the reason she had so many nerfs is because she was so overtuned at launch. She's also fun, so hopefully this will still keep her viable. But uh, I think she's still better than James Rayner. Fan of knives gets a um, ten damage nerf. Which is what, uh, what is that? 7% damage nerf, pretty big deal. 7% or so. Containment disc gets a buff, that's her isolation. Warning cage, 20 seconds nerf. Blade dance gets a nerf as well. Again, about 8%, 7.5% uh, nerf to her damage of blade dance. Just checking what blade dance is, because I'm not sure I was taking that talent. It is the one... Wait, seven? There's no seven Blade Dance talent. Blade Dance is at four. Oh, mistake in the patch notes. This is the level four physical damage. So the problem for me with that is not that that needed a nerf. It's that the others are kind of bad. Pin down and Blade Dance has the same amount of damage. They just do it in a different area blade dance is around you and it's physical this is magical and it's in the same area as fan of knives but this is such a difficult quest needing to hit three heroes bunch of times or hitting four heroes once that generally you were better off just taking blade dance they had the exact same amount of damage once you completed it and this one doesn't need the quest completion so I guess it's fair that Blade to Dance gets brought down so that Pin Down actually has a little bit more damage. That's a bit, yeah. Uh, and then Shadow Armor gets 20 armor instead of 25, which is the Blink Armor with uh, auto attacks against heroes, refreshing it. So pretty significant nerfs across the board. Five nerfs in the 7.5% damage, 7.5% uh, range for her damage and one buff. I think Maiev is probably where she needs to be after these changes. Now here's Crash Lightning. Crash Lightning, I feel like they did one very good thing with it now and one bad thing. The good thing is nerfing its damage by a quarter, the bonus damage. Huh? Crash Lightning was very strong. I do think it got overpicked. He did get picked for the four man. And even if there was not a solo laner, you still want to take it and be in the four man, which kind of messes up the whole thing because everyone wants to abuse Crash Lightning. Um, but this is, in my opinion, pretty dumb. I don't like the change. Personally, I don't think it's fun or the correct direction. If you look at uh, Thrall, the way it works is Crash Lightning can stack up to... Wait. Oh, so there's a 30 stack total. Oh, I, okay, I get it now that I read it here because it wasn't clear to me. So there's no longer... Uh, the prioritization to heroes never works anymore for completing the quest or any part of the stacks. Before you had 20 hard ones and then 20 easy ones. Now all 30 are hard. You get your max damage and it starts to be easier to hit people but only after you complete it so it's truly a single reward tier instead of a double like either before it was a one reward and then a cap we don't call 40 stacks of crash lightning a reward because it was the cap so it was 20 was the reward and 40 is the cap now it's 30 is the reward and the cap okay uh i don't know how i feel about that i guess they just don't want to have a lopsided non-linear completion progress. It always remains equally difficult. I don't like the change though. I, honestly, I feel like Crash Light, 
chain lightning in general should always prioritize heroes because it feels so random and random isn't very fun you cast chain lightning on a minion there's a hero next to it and a minion and i don't know of a way to control it to go to the hero instead of the minion and it doesn't feel fun to me it feels rng and it not the fun kind of rng so i wish that the smart AI for Chain Lightning was always there and the rest to be balanced accordingly. So I think this is fair, but I don't think this is very fun. Moving on, Vala, multi-shot, gets a 7 damage buff. What is that, about 4.5% damage to multi-shot. Vala, I don't see her at all in my games anymore at Masters Hero League. She gets outskilled by Hanzo in terms of range. He does the same or better damage as her from a much safer range. And Tracer is better at finishing and staying alive than her. And, and, and you know, attacking the relevant targets. So Tracer and Hanzo, between the two of them, Vala has no more plays. Only if they all get banned and you don't want anything else, apparently. Um, so this is why Vala doesn't see much play, even though essentially she's still a pretty good hero. I think this is fine. But I think in order to make certain heroes viable, like Zul'jin, Raynor, and Vala, what they need, in my opinion, is a small health buff, all these heroes. Because the reason that Taika sees a lot of play in pro play, partly is because he's very sturdy. Same with Greymane. And yeah, Taika has the bigger they are, and you know that, that is very relevant. But it's because of all the talents that give him survivability, like Odin has 25% armor. Uh, this one has armor, this one has 50% armor. This is in the end why Tychus gets picked, right? But Raynor's E is pretty easy to burst through before it uh, completely procs. Because uh, it says it automatically heals Raynor, but it doesn't say over how many seconds. Uh, which is a tooltip uh, deficiency, but it is more than instant, is what I can say. It looks like it will do automatically, but it's actually over time. So if you read it, you wouldn't know how hard you're going to die when you get that heal. The main issue with Raynor and Zul'jin is that Tracer or Genji will come in and they just blow you up when you're at 90% life. And so I feel like uh, that's what these heroes need, is higher health, not higher damage. Because Raynor's damage output is actually pretty decent. And it's the same with Vala and Tychus and so on. It's just, it's a question of survivability. Same thing with Probius. Probius is a fantastic hero. Information, uh, scouting, zoning, uh, slows, burst, um, you know, good heroic, infinite mana regeneration. He's got shield generation, team buffs. He's interesting. But because there's Genji and Tracer, they will just get blown up. So that, that's why I think these heroes don't get picked. So in my opinion, they need health buffs, not damage. But still, anything helps, right? To see them to be a little bit more viable. Now Zul'jin gets a 4 damage buff, which is about 4.5% buff for him on his auto attack. While that is nice, it doesn't deal with uh, his core issue. Is that too much of his power is in his trait. His you want axe and too little of his power comes out at level one, and it's cool to be late game monster and to get a lot of auto attacks and then be a late game monster and look I have four hundred, I have four hundred stacks on my uh, you want axe. But the problem with Zuljin is the same as with Sylvanas, it's that when your opponent makes it really easy for you in the early to mid game because either they're bad, or your team is just better than them or they made some really bad mistakes then you'll do great in the situations where you would already win anyway with another useful hero Zul'jin wins you games in a difficult manner early on it's difficult but you're surviving early and you're getting your stacks now you're winning late game pretty hard but you would have done that as well with another hero like Sonya or, or, or Thrall or as something meta like Tychus or Junkrat, you would have also won, but easier, because you're actually contributing in a more significant way early game. That's how I feel about Zul'jin. Um, I do like the hero a lot, I like his kit, and this is going to help. But I wish that You Want Axe was still interesting, but less important, and just better baseline hero. 
And that's why when I play with some Zul'jin on ladder, the Akaku guy, uh, he always goes for the Q build. I think that's probably best because it removes some of Zul'jin's late game scaling necessity when you go for Q build. Uh, Bone Slicer. And it takes away like even more questing, even more late game power, even more win more. So I do think Q build is probably still the best to play for Zul'jin. And... Uh, yeah, but anyway, this will help and so will this, though I think Ensnare is not the most popular. I think uh, I'd still rather get Lacerate. So that was Suljin for me. Now uh, Medivh. Medivh's best level 7 is Arcane Explosion. And that is understandable. When you play it, you'll feel it. Very strong. Uh, they're going to nerf that a little bit, as you can see. Uh, Force of Magic, which gives you the spell power at 7, and it reads as follows. Uh, if you prevent enough damage, you get spell power for a period of 15 seconds. It was 10. So that's a pretty nice change to a talent that didn't get picked yet. And reabsorption will give a bit more healing. It's 20 baseline. At 13, you can make it 50. Now it's 60. Again, fair. It's the least uh, picked talent, probably. Uh, the best, of course, is group shields. And just, it's still going to be the best. Not reabsorption. Circle of Protection. Uh, I don't think it changes uh, his uh, best build, which is still Burst Shield and then Group Burst Shields. So that is uh, that is my um, yeah my prediction. Let the games begin. Moving on to support, Ariel has been probably bottom support for a period of time now. There are still some situations where Ariel is probably really strong like when you have a gul'dan when the opponent has two tanks you have two tanks you get some good zoning um so ariel does still have some powerful niche but it cannot be denied that pro players don't look at her open division doesn't look at her and even in ladder generally ariel on your team is a heavy burden an anchor on your leg and it's also because ariel is a little bit more difficult to play and also she relies on good allies. So if either Ariel is bad or her bestow hope target is bad, she's going to suffer her healing output. So that's why uh, generally Ariel should be expected to be sub 50 win percent rate. And that's fine as well. But here we go with some buffs. 11 damage to her basic attack. That's a huge buff. That's something like what? 18%? Big deal. That also gives her more hope, more auto attacks, more wave clear damage and more damage in team fight detainment strike from a 14 to a 12 second cooldown there is always hope pretty big deal and resurrect goes from a five range to seven range and they got a buff on the 20 seconds on the cooldown on the heroic sublime energized court of course has to be nerfed a bit by comparison because she now does more physical attack damage so that's a fine uh accord according but uh nerf blinding flash quarter second reduction on uh, blind i pray this time you find peace this was of course the best 13 talent and i think that's fine it really was quite strong and maybe illidan gets a small buff by comparison with this uh the the best level 20 talent by far is the shield of hope the shield on the entire team the more health they have missing it's still the best even though Diamond Resolve can have a good niche if you use Crystal Aegis and you really want to protect the target that comes out of the Aegis. So I think it's a fair buff, 60, in line with uh, certain types of Hardened Shield. Um, and Angelic Flight also a buff, so she can be a better global, which is pretty cool flair for her. And this again is a situational talent. Neither of these are going to go over 20% pick rate, I'm sure. Uh, Shield of Hope will still be 60 plus. Now I imagine it must be 80 plus. Uh, but it's good to buff these so that she has some cool other options as well. Your evil ends here. Moving on to Malfurion. Malfurion has been the best support uh, presently in the Nexus. He's tier S on my tier list. The only support that is. Uh, when played well, and he is a bit harder to play. When played well, Malfurion is uh, very powerful. He has uh, a lot of burst heal if he lands his Moonfire as well. Uh, he's got the movement speed, the roots, the game turning heroic, and I'm not talking about tranquility. So I think this is a fair nerf 
4% per hero instead of 5. Still good talent. Still probably the best. But just 1% per hero less. I think that's fair. A shame. It is a shame though for people that enjoyed that one. Uh, Nature's Balance gives you a Q and a W buff. Bigger W, which is Moonfire, which gives you more heals. And also uh, the extra duration on Q. It was very strong and it was the most popular. So I think that's fair. Excellent. He's still going to be good, but two nerfs on talents that uh, are a little bit uh, the best. Moving on to Artanis, I was a bit uh, excited actually to see Artanis in the buff list. I thought that uh, Artanis as the main glorified lane footman minion was forgotten, just like Raynor as the ranged minion. But then don't get too excited because his buffs are small. Uh, we see that uh, it's all mana buffs on Blade Dash and Twin Blades. It's not the thing that... Uh, Order is restored. Uh, that goes a little bit too far, Artanis. Uh, he does have mana issues, so in that sense they are justified changes. And any buffs really help these heroes that don't see a lot of play. 10 mana, 5 mana. But it doesn't take away his major issue, is that he doesn't have an escape. And generally, when the team decides it's no longer worth fighting, Artanis will always be left behind and he will always go die. No match for the Blades of a Templar. Unfortunately, five players are a match for the Blades of a Templar, and those five players will kill Artanis when the rest uh, disengages. But it doesn't take away that good Artanis players, when they pick him in the right situation and use Suppression Pulse at the right time, uh, can still make a really big impact. Look at uh, that player on Europe ladder, Sexy Platypus. Um, he plays Artanis, he was rank 1 uh, last season and it does feel powerful when he uses it but then probably you know good players will feel powerful on any but it is um, it is possible to play with Artanis and do better uh, this is probably his worst level 13 so it's not that good uh, it does get buffed I don't have an immediate insight as to how much it will help him but overall these are tiny changes and probably all this together will lead to a reduction in his win rate, I predict, over the next week. Um, because uh, more people will play him. Strength in unity. And there's actually weakness in unity in that sense. Because people are going to try him out. They're not going to be that good with him. They're going to feed and die. And the players that are actually already a specialist at him, um, you know, they, they, they will continue to be good to, despite these uh, buffs. It won't make that huge of a difference. But there's going to be people that try him. Same as Zul'jin. Zul'jin's buff is like big enough to actually believe that his win rate will go up a bit. But again, there's going to be people that play Zul'jin and will ruin the draft because they want to try him out. And so I wouldn't be surprised if their uh, win rate actually goes downwards. You lack honor. Maybe, but I'm going to stay well away from you, Artanis. Then comes Blaze. The Blaze changes uh, affect the Bunker. I feel like one thing needed to be done with the Bunker. And it is actually just the increase in the cooldown. That's what it needed. I think the flipping in the Bunker is a thing that is fun for pro players. It feels uh, smooth. And it rewards skill and uh, quick movement uh, with your mouse and your keyboard. It will have a half second or less cooldown to e enter and exit. And making it a one second, I'm almost certain that it's going to feel clunky and less fun. Smoking. So that's too bad. Uh, in my opinion, I don't like this change. Um, they have their reasoning, but I don't think it needed this. I think this is all they needed to do. Um, I like bunker humping, to be honest. Yeah. Let's get cooking. This is fair. I think it could have been 60 as well. Just leave this out. 40 to 60. Done. Ready to fry. Moving on to Sonia. Uh, Sonia has been uh, super good at the moment. And she gets some nerfs. So let's see how that works out. So it's burfs, right? Buff and nerf. A Furious Blow is a level 1 talent. Time to die! That uh, I haven't played around with yet. She's pretty new in her rework. Uh, Slam will do more damage. 
And uh, the exact way that it reads is every fourth cast of Seismic Slam deals 50% more damage to the primary target and doesn't cost Fury. That's 50 now instead of 40. That's fine, but so long as Warpaint and Tough as Nails are there, they're pr probably better. Battle Rage was just crazy busted. I could not believe it when I played with it yesterday. Uh, or two days ago. Three stacks of 10% heal. Now you get two over a longer cooldown. It's a massive nerf. But I think it's probably still the best, to be honest. It's still 25% more damage to mercs. And it's still double 10% that doesn't sacrifice fury. The charge use cooldown is not the actual cooldown, which is 30 seconds per charge. It's the in-between grace period. So you can't use one at 0 seconds, another at 5, and another at 10. Now it's 1 at 0 and 1 at 8. And then the next one at 30 seconds. So 0, 8, 30. That's a pretty big difference from 0, 5, 10, 30. Big, big, big nerf. And still probably very strong. Mystical Spear, 1 second less CDR at 13. That's fair. Spear is strong. Uh, Rampage is the... Rampage is just insane talent as well. It's 25% physical damage up. Baseline. And you got 3 quarters of a second CDR for your spear on every basic. Now it's half a second. I think that's a fair nerf. It was, in my opinion, by far the best 16. Though it is, of course, different to nerfs to steel. But I think that's a fair uh, nerf. Nonetheless, despite all these changes, I still believe Sonya will be tier 1, maybe tier S. Tyriel. They deal with the most problematic talent for Tyriel, which is Justice for All. Tyriel doesn't see a lot of play in Hero League. It's partly because he is a bit harder to play. He's also a bit more of a teamwork hero, but he's very strong at pro play. And his level 1 talent, Justice for All, has been busted since his rework. 100% of shields goes to allies. Now it's going to be 75%. That's totally fair and justified. I I think it's good. Maybe they could buff his auto attack talents. They're probably still not very good. Uh, but yeah, Justice for All. I used to like playing Terry a lot. I don't play him as much recently, but I think someday I'll play him again. Indeed. And then we'll ha see justice be done. Justice be done. Oh, I didn't mean justified. That was funny. That was a funny punny by accident. Nice uh, catching that chat. And then some bug fixes. Uh, yeah. Samuro no longer has quest complete every time that he chooses to cast mirror image. So that's pretty much the patch changes. Now, chat. Discuss what do you think and what do you guys think on the YouTubes? Leave your comments down in the section below and please don't forget to like and subscribe. Have a lovely day. See you next video.